Hello everybody, it's Serafina, and I'm here with your daily Tarot Insight. So before we begin, I would like to call upon the spirit of the universe that loves us unconditionally. I would like to call upon the spirits of this land, of this island, and of this ocean, and I thank them for holding the space and for their ancient wisdom. And I would like to call upon my guides, my ancestors, my team of light, and my higher self, and I thank them for their presence and guidance with this collective reading. Dear beloved spirit of the universe, what guidance is there for the collective today? So right now I'm being drawn to the moon. We just had a new moon in Virgo um, Saturday and it's going to be um, waxing into the full moon in Pisces. And um, I always consider the new moon in Pisces, which happened six months ago, to be very important because it's the last new moon of the astrological wheel. Because then Aries began and that's the beginning of the astrological wheel. So it is really marking like this halfway point. And Pisces is all about surrender. It's all about unconditional love. It's about service. So I feel that maybe making a connection to the moon as she is growing in these uh, next two weeks, like going to see her every night if you can and see what is being illuminated within you. What guidance is there for the collective today? We have the chariot. What further guidance is there for this, for the collective today? The nine of pentacles. Further guidance is there for the collective today? We have the Ten of Pentacles. What further guidance is there for the collective today? The Three of Wands. And what is this all about? What is this all about? We have the High Priestess. I've always loved this particular card of the High Priestess. She has the two pillars, the antlers which connect her to divinity. She has the dark and the light. She's just majestic in this one. And of course, the High Priestess archetype is very much related to Virgo, right? What further guidance is there for the collective today? We have karmic board clearing, energetic clearing, rewrite your story, live your truth. She looks like a high priestess to me, right? Look at all her hands and they're free. Like sometimes we'll see images of goddesses with lots of hands and they're doing lots of things. But in all of these, she is like in poses of power and her hands are free. So there's a sense of levity that I'm sensing here. What further guidance is there for the collective today? It says it's time to release negativity. So Scorpio energy is here, which actually speaks to the eclipses, right? We're going to have a Scorpio new moon in October and that is going to be one of the, uh, the two eclipses that are going to finalize this ecliptic sandwich or the ecliptic cross that I keep on talking about. What further guidance is there for the collective? We have cut your cords with Archangel Michael. I'll show it first. 
It says, ask Archangel Michael to clear any old attachments to fear that stem from past relationships, freeing you from destructive patterns. So already we have him cutting cords. We have karmic board clearing with the high priestess and Scorpio, which does have to do a lot with karma. It's related to the eighth house, right? So, and eclipses as well. Um, what other deck wants to be seen today? I feel like Archangel Metatron. Archangel Metatron, what loving guidance do you have for the collective today? White, purity, and innocence. Interesting. So we're having kind of like this negativity, clearing, and maybe moving back into innocence. And... What further guidance is there for the collective today? This is the White Light Oracle by Alana Fairchild. What further guidance is there for the collective today? We have Sacrament of Extreme Unction, or Unction, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Number 34, for those of you who have this, who have this uh, deck. So I feel today like reading from this, I usually don't like starting readings uh, by actually reading out of a book, but today this is what I'm feeling. So let's go ahead. Your heart knows how to let go so you can find peace. It's time for you to experience spiritual closure. A beautiful new reality is opening up for you. Entering it requires you to release your attachment to the past. You have been inwardly preparing for a powerful rebirth. Now it is time to trust in what is meant for you and move forward with an open, trusting heart and peaceful mind. So extreme unction translates to the last anointing. While spiritual grace will be with you always and blessing is always available to the receptive heart, this oracle wishes to bring you to your attention of an ending of a particularly stubborn pattern. As it does, you will feel greater freedom and release. Give yourself permission to acknowledge that all people, including you, have done their best. So I feel that lots of us are entering a new phase of, dare we call it, forgiveness or acceptance. So we're starting off with the chariot. And as I mentioned yesterday, the chariot has been very present for all of us. I always automatically see, you know, it's related to cancer, right? So this like strong build outside and the soft and tender inside. And it... If you notice, the two sphinx are, are looking in different position, in different directions. And so it can speak of us kind of being like, um, having two distinct paths that we can travel through. And what I'm seeing right now is that one of these paths is the old way of behaving, the old way that our circuits in our brains have kind of like developed, right? The samskaras or these grooves that we already function in. Then we have this other face that's looking the other way. And it's like saying, what other way can I approach this? How can I be resourceful and see things from a new perspective? Because even though I am the one who is in the chariot, the actual chariot, it is my subconscious mind which wants to lead the way or does lead the way for most of us, unless you're a Jedi. So yes, there's hope and we're setting off on a voyage, we're setting off on a journey. And as we set off on this journey, how important it is to be able to question ourselves, which are we gonna allow our subconscious mind to lead the way or are we going to allow ourselves to reprogram it? The Nine of Pentacles is a card of sovereignty. It's a card of independence. It's a card of recognizing, it's like that, spiritual insight that we get like we have everything that we need and that we want and all this time we've been seeking it outside of ourselves however we are complete unto ourselves and i can't help but notice here that there's this woman and what i'm interpreting this as like a mandala of some sorts and it's almost like she is it's kind of like being destroyed but like she's creating it but destroying it and so it's making me think of like those artworks that they do i think it's in buddhist traditions where they make it they build it and then as an act of letting go they kind of just like whew, let it go in the wind or they destroy it right and so it's kind of like allowing ourselves to grow through the cycles 
and recognizing that once we achieve certain levels of independence within ourselves, it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. I can't help but notice this kind of like snake-like thing around and on other reptiles around. So something around shedding of the skin. And also I'm noticing these um, wings. And these wings look like new wings. They don't look like fully developed wings. So maybe some of us are still like grabbing the strength coming out of our cocoon. The Ten of Pentacles also speaks of independence but you know it comes after the nine and here the ten speaks of having everything that we want and need so the nine of pentacles is a card of independence but once we reach the ten it's just like saying solid foundation it can even speak to ancestral healing and ancestral karma and doing that type of work so i feel that it's kind of like we're allowing ourselves to reprogram our subconscious mind by recognizing that we we have everything we want we are sovereign onto our unto ourselves and with that it's kind of like being able to experience this fulfillment that maybe some of us sought in childhood or in families and just kind of like providing that for ourselves and then we have the three of wands and this is a beautiful one the three of wands speaks of new things coming in new opportunities um courageous um openness i'm just feeling this heart opening right and so once we know and i asked what was it what is about and it's the high priestess so what this tells me is you already know you've already been working it your intuition is talking to you and it could also do be related to your spiritual development, right? The high priestess is highly intuitive. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, she doesn't reveal information digested to you. It's kind of like these layers and these symbols that we have that we that go revealing themselves to us as our consciousness goes evolving. So we have the card of releasing negativity with Scorpio. Scorpio likes to go deep. Scorpio can go deep. It's one of its beautiful medicines, right? And with that, we have karmic board clearing. And I also feel like reading from this one quickly. I feel like it has an important um, message for us. Karmic block blockages are often misunderstood. Many people think that a blockage is punishment of their bad choices or wrongful behavior, but it's not. Source is always on our side. It wants us to have a positive experience here on earth, but it also honors our choices and experiences. If you're being overwhelmed by a traumatic memory or a power, painful event, know it's because of the old energy that is no longer serving you that your spirit is called to be released. This card comes to you at a time when you're ready to surrender old ways of being and old stories. So the message is clear. Time to release old ways of being. It's time to do the karmic clearing Cut the cords with past relationships or present relationships because this particular card speaks of our ability to go into these safe havens in the angelic realm to receive nurturing, to go into the healing chambers of nurturing. So if some of us are feeling overwhelmed and bogged down by these karmic patterns that we've been working through with our subconscious mind into greater independence, emotional fulfillment, and allowing ourselves to be open to the new things that are coming through, I feel that we need times to rest and to integrate because our high priestess is speaking to us, right? We're able to hold the paradoxes into one column and the column is ourselves, right? And so making a sacrament to these difficult things, like this card speak, spoke of the same thing, of a difficult phase coming to an end, a spiritual, a sacrament of extreme unction is, you know, upon you. So if you needed words of encouragement, I feel that this is what the reading is here to do today. I hope that this was useful to you. If it is, I'm going to kindly ask you to comment, like, or subscribe to my channel if you are on YouTube. You can also check out my personal website if you're feeling the calling to uh, get a reading with me. So I will be back here tomorrow. Bye.